welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. I'm actually sat in front of a vine here, a grape vine, which we got as a cutting from the great vine of Hampton Court Palace. So I have a little bit of Hampton Court Palace here at my home in Spain. I think that's wonderful. It, the grapes are beautiful as well, really lovely. Where am I taking you back to today? Well, I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, but actually we're going back to Germany and not England. And I do apologize to anyone that's good at German or any Germans listening for any of my bad pronunciation. But on this day in Tudor history, the 8th of April, 1586, leading Lutheran theologian Martin Chemnitz died in Braunschweig in Germany. He was aged 66 at his death. Now Chemnitz is known as Alter Martinus or the second Martin. Now that's referring to the first Martin being Martin Luther of course, the very famous reformer. And Chemnitz actually also played a huge role in the Reformation. Um, he, his role was unifying the Lutheran church following the Reformation. Now, you've probably never heard of him. I hadn't until I started uh, writing my book. Um, so I'm gonna share with you a few facts about this second Martin, a man that you know we know, well, generally the general public know very little about. Martin Chemnitz was born on the 9th of November 1522 in Schroen, Britain, Brandenburg, and I've probably absolutely slaughtered that name, in Germany. He was the youngest of three children born to Paul and Euphemia Chemnitz. Their surname is also written as Chemnitz. Martin Chemnitz worked as a weaver's apprentice before attending the University of Frankfurt and then the University of Wittenberg. At Wittenberg, he studied under reformers Martin Luther and Philip Melanchthon. Isn't that amazing to study under those two men? And he was a protege of Melanchthon as well. He then continued his studies at the University of Königsberg, which is now in Kaliningrad in Russia, and he graduated from there with a master's. In 1550, he worked as a librarian to Albert, Duke of Prussia, and this position uh, gave him the opportunity to study theology and to study the Bible in its original languages of Hebrew and Greek. So a great opportunity for someone that's interested in theology. In 1553, he returned to Wittenberg and he started lecturing um, at the university on Melanchthon's uh, famous work, Locae Communes Rerum Theologicarum, or Theological Commonplaces. Um, now, the Encyclopedia of Britannica describes this work as the first systematic treatise on Reformation theology. In November 1554, Martin was ordained as a priest and he became coadjutor, don't know how you pronounce that, to Wacken Merlin. Uh, and by the way, that position means that he was a bishop who assists a diocesan bishop. In 1562, Martin attacked Jesuits in one of his works, and he's the first Protestant theologian to actually do that, to attack the Jesuits. Robert Alexander Marix explains that Chemnitz described the Jesuits as papal offspring who'd invaded Germany and spread their nests throughout the country. So yes, he didn't like the Jesuits. Between 1567 and his death, he was the superintendent of the churches of Braunschweig. And in 1568, Martin received a doctorate in theology from the University of Rostock in Germany. From 1568, he worked with theologian Jakob Andre, or Andrea to unite German Lutheranism. There had been divisions in the church following the death of founder Martin Luther in 1546. And these were ended by the 1577 Formula of Concord, which was a Lutheran statement of faith, which was put together by Martin Chemnitz, Jakob Andrea, and several other theologians two-thirds of the Lutheran Church accepted it at that time. 
Now, Martin Chemnitz's works include an autobiography, a commentary on Melanchthon's work, Locke Communes, and writings relating to the formula of Concord, and also homilies and devotional works. Now, I'm going to give you a link to find out more about this Lutheran theologian and his works. So if you are interested in finding out more about him, you can explore him a bit more. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 8th of April 1554, a cat dressed as a Catholic priest and holding a piece of paper to represent the communion wafer was hanged at the gallows in Cheapside. And you can find out more about this bizarre and horrible event in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe button just there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live, which is on a daily basis at the moment. And you can also give me a like and leave me a comment. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. And you can hit the bell to be notified. <laughs> no, I can't say that. No, because I've just said that.